there is a way for food processors to protect themselves, their product, and their customers from foodborne illness. It's called HACCP, and that means Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. HACCP was developed for the NASA space program, where, as you can imagine, the food has to be absolutely safe. Thousands of operations around the world use HACCP-based food safety programs in various stages of food production. It's a highly respected and effective system. HACCP is being used from farm to fork. Since food safety starts at animal and crop production, right through to processing, food distribution, and retail food service. HACCP is recognized as the single most effective way to eliminate, reduce, or control hazards in any food handling or processing operation. We'll talk more about the HACCP system itself in just a few moments. But first, let's look at some of the potential problems HACCP helps to control. North America has one of the safest food processing industries in the world. But as advanced as our industry might be, the need to identify and control hazards remains vital for the continued safety of our food supply, whether they're chemical, physical, microbiological, or allergy related. Let's take a look at these hazards. Allergenic hazards are proteins that cause allergic reactions ranging from runny nose or itchy eyes to rashes, respiratory problems, or even death. Allergenic hazards may include eggs, shellfish, nuts, soy, wheat, sesame seeds, sulfites, and milk. Biological hazards include illness-causing bacteria, such as salmonella or E. coli, viruses such as hepatitis A, parasites, and molds. Chemical hazards include cleaning compounds, pesticides, preservatives, antibiotics, and even food ingredients that are added in at incorrect levels. Physical hazards could include glass or metal fragments, stones, wood splinters, or bone pieces. These four hazard types could be associated with ingredients, processing aids, processing steps, or the processing environment. Here we're talking about improper temperature control, equipment sanitation, and of course, the personal hygiene of employees. It's important that potential food safety hazards are known, understood, and dealt with properly by all employees. In past years, food processors often relied on their quality control personnel and inspection systems to monitor product safety and quality. Finished product testing was the tool used to determine product safety. HACCP is a highly effective preventative control system. It identifies potential food safety problems first and then shows the best way to prevent, reduce or eliminate them. HACCP builds ongoing safety measures right into the production, processing, distribution and retail of foods. Keep in mind that HACCP is a preventative control system. Good manufacturing practices, or HACCP prerequisites, address those hazards associated with the environment where food is processed. About 90% of the work that is done when developing a HACCP system is spent on development of the prerequisite programs. Why? The processing environment needs to be a safe place to produce food. A great deal of control needs to be exercised in order to prevent hazards in the processing environment from compromising food safety. Good manufacturing practices must be in place before a HACCP system can work. In a processing plant, HACCP plans focus specifically on each product and on each food production line. This is where a hazard associated with the product can be eliminated or reduced to an acceptable level. For example, cooking a meat product to kill pathogens or disease-causing bacteria. HACCP plans provide an organized, documented way to ensure food safety, and all staff at every step of the process are involved. Governments play an important role in food safety, and as a result, some agencies around the world have made HACCP mandatory as a condition of trading products between countries. A given country may require that meat products sold into that country be produced in a facility that has HACCP in place. The HACCP system is so effective that a large number of manufacturers, 
retailers, and food service companies insist that their suppliers adopt HACCP in their operations to ensure that the products supplied are the safest possible. HACCP increases confidence in the safety of food products. The bottom line? HACCP increases the processing plant's competitive advantage. HACCP provides food suppliers and their customers with more confidence in product safety. It's a powerful tool in preventing hazards because it builds safety right into each step of the food processor. HACCP is simple, it's effective, and this is how it works. There are seven principles in the HACCP system. The first principle is to conduct a hazard assessment. This means to identify hazards associated with the food product in question. It includes assessing hazards in growing and harvesting ingredients, processing, distribution, merchandising, and even how people prepare their food before eating it. That's a lot of information, so let's break it down. As mentioned earlier, a hazard is something biological, allergenic, chemical, or physical in food that could cause a health problem. An important part of hazard assessment is determining the level of risk with each hazard. This is done by checking into the likelihood of a hazard actually occurring, and also by looking at the severity of consequences, or how badly this hazard might affect people's health. To help understand a hazard's probability and the severity of consequences, let's look at the example of raw meat. The probability that raw meat contains harmful bacteria is considered medium. But even so, if handled properly, the raw meat is not likely to hurt someone's health because most meat is cooked properly. So the hazard risk is assessed as low. Let's use the cooking step for a hamburger as another example. The severity of illness associated with an undercooked hamburger is high, as dangerous E. coli may survive and it is known that low numbers can cause serious illness. The probability that this will happen is low if the hamburger is cooked properly. So the hazard risk is assessed as low. Assessment helps determine which hazards are of the greatest likelihood and severity to need the controls of a HACCP system. The second HACCP principle is to determine critical control points. Now, this is important because if control is lost, it's likely that human health will be compromised. A critical control point, or CCP, is a control step used to prevent, eliminate, or reduce a hazard to an acceptable level. The third principle of HACCP is to establish the critical limits that must be met at each of the identified critical control points. Critical limits are what must be met to ensure that a critical control point effectively controls a hazard. Criteria most frequently used for critical limits are time, temperature, water activity, pH, preservatives, microbiological, and sensorial information. In the production of fluid or whole egg product, pasteurization is a critical control point. The most crucial parameters, the critical limits, are the duration and the temperature of pasteurization. For example, the temperature that egg must be pasteurized at and the holding time. These time-temperature combinations are minimum critical limits that have been established to make sure that harmful microorganisms are destroyed. These critical limits help ensure that food products are safe. Now the fourth principle is to establish and implement procedures to monitor each critical control point. Monitoring is the process of checking that the critical limits set for each CCP are being met. Monitoring involves systematically observing, measuring, and recording the most important factors needed for control. Continuous control using automated methods is best. When continuous monitoring isn't possible, regularly scheduled monitoring by trained personnel is needed. Quick, easy methods are best suited for monitoring so a problem can be identified and corrected immediately. Record all monitoring data for future reference. And remember that at times it might be necessary to make adjustments to the CCP monitoring to ensure food stays safe. The fifth principle, 
take prompt corrective action whenever the monitoring indicates that limits are not met. If proper corrective action isn't taken, human health might be at risk. The corrective action to be taken depends on the potential hazard. This might include stopping production, extending the cooking time, increasing processing temperature, increasing acidity, or reworking or discarding product. For our hamburger example, it would require that cooking continue until the critical limit of 71 degrees Celsius is met. For canning, it would mean that the required time, temperature, and or pressure is met. The sixth principle is to establish verification procedures. Now, verification procedures reveal whether or not identified food safety activities are actually getting completed. This means checking the checker or asking the question, is it getting done? One example of a verification procedure is to determine if the process is getting done properly. This can be done by evaluating the records associated with a given CCP. Are the records being filled out properly at the required frequency? Can the person who is doing the documentation be identified by their initials? Were corrective actions, if any, taken effective in controlling the hazard? For example, if the temperature of the hamburger was taken and it was recorded as 66 degrees Celsius, the corrective action should indicate that the hamburger was further cooked and temperature measured again to ensure that it reached the critical limit of 71 degrees Celsius. Other verification activities include interviewing staff on their understanding of the CCP, corrective actions and record keeping requirements, and to observe the staff member who is monitoring the CCP to ensure they are doing the monitoring properly. A final verification activity may include product testing for the presence of the hazard of concern. The seventh principle is to establish documentation and record keeping procedures. Documentation must be kept on file, including details on how the HACCP team conducted the hazard analysis and determined the critical control points and the critical limits. Records should be kept for activities like CCP monitoring, deviations and corrective actions, and any modifications made to the HACCP system. This is also known as the logbook of changes. A permanent record is invaluable in showing whether safe, correct processing conditions are being completed, or in showing that any out-of-control processes are properly corrected. Once records and documents have been developed, they need ongoing attention to ensure they are being used properly and that they stay up to date. But the time put in is well worth it. Another important part of HACCP is validation. Validating is making sure that your process is effective in controlling hazards. It means asking yourself, is the process working? For example, does the pasteurizer always reach the temperature of 75 degrees Celsius for 16 seconds and does this destroy all harmful bacteria every time? We have now reviewed the seven principles of implementing a HACCP plan. Remember, HACCP requires constant upkeep, so the system ensures food safety. This keeps people safe and keeps food products safe, reliable, and more competitive in the marketplace. Does HACCP work? Definitely. We've heard about how it can reduce the amount of finished product testing required, lower costs for nonconformance, and increase confidence in food products. HACCP generates a great degree of assurance for food safety. Employees who have worked with the system say that HACCP gives them more responsibility for operating procedures and a greater sense of pride in their work. There are helpful materials available for you to learn more about the HACCP system and how to put it into place. For more information on these reference materials, please visit the Alberta Agriculture and Food website. All it takes is some time and commitment to reap the rewards of a well-designed and implemented HACCP system. To learn how to put HACCP into practice, see Module 2 of HACCP, Making Food Products Safe.